Hey guys, Jeremy here. It's four days today until uh, Supernatural returns on Friday with season 13. Uh, also, by the way, if you haven't got him yet, uh, they probably might be sold out, <laughs> but tickets for The Last Jedi just went on sale, so try and grab them if you can. This video, admittedly, the title is a spoiler, yes, but it's something that I need to talk about because this aspect of season 12 is one of the things that angered me the most and it was the death of Crowley. Not saying that the British Men of Letters was the greatest of storylines, honestly it wasn't in terms of what the brothers have come against before you have to immediately understand or just kind of agree with if not understand my reasoning of that they were just a weak villain. Humans aren't that big of a thing. We've seen this throughout the show. The last time humans were really a threat was season one and that was Bender's as well as Gordon who had to become a vampire to try and kill the brothers and even then that still didn't kill him. One of the best deaths of the entire show though. I remember loving that death. That death was so cool. Anyways, so there's a lot of things that had a few issues with season 13, 12. Uh, Rick Springfield as Lucifer, he was awful. He even apparently, from what I've seen in the interviews, he said that he didn't watch any of Pelleringo's stuff, which totally made sense because he wasn't like him at all. He was just awful. Uh, the British Man of Letters things, as I mentioned, just was a storyline that kind of didn't go anywhere. The use of the mother was honestly just an annoying side note. Um, there were actually some really cool interesting characters, like, uh, what's her name? I always forget her name, the Death Girl. She was really cool. The the gay brother and the sister witch uh, monster hunters, those guys were cool. Um, what was another one? There were some other people that were introduced in this season. Uh, this season actually made me like Rowena, but it killed off... Killed off two characters. Castiel, who we know is not dead. He's gonna come back somehow. It's, it's, he's not dying. But Crowley. Now, his death scene was honestly awful. It's, it was shit. The whole aspect was they had found this random tear, which was a MacGuffin, if you ever saw one, that was created by the, the, the Antichrist child thing in Biggie. So, it made this tear they were able to force Lucifer through it when they found out that it was there, and they're like, hey, we can stop him here. It's kind of a random thing that Crowley would know about this, because he's like, ah, I know how a spell of how to stop it. You know that you could have used this idea of getting rid of the brothers for years. If you knew how to, in that season, season, what was it, season eight? Yeah, season eight, where he was the villain of the season. All he had to do was just put the brothers in an alternate dimension and just never get them back. That's all he had to do. Like, that, it's funny that they mentioned, the thing that just annoys me is that he had this ability to close a portal in his knowledge this whole time, yet he never used it against the brothers, that's what I mean. Like, that doesn't make sense of how he knows, boom, I just know how to close this portal, even though I've never used this sort of magic ever before. So they go through the portal, and they get Lucifer there, and Dean shoots him with the angel holy bullet gun thing, um, and Sam and Dean, uh, Sam and Crowley are making the spell. They're doing all the things. The thing is, in terms of storytelling-wise, they terribly built this up, because they find out about the terror, and that's it. They talk to Bobby, they find out where it is, and that is it. They then come to see Lucifer arrives, and they run through the portal. We never get any inclination of what their plan was. All we know is that they know that there's a portal and that Lucifer falls them through. My biggest example of how you do a season finale with twists and turns well, the ending of season three, where they are building up to taking on, oh my God, I cannot remember her name right now, but the white-eyed demon, the, the big one who was pretty much, who rips Dean apart. And then season five, where they are building up. They talk about what they have to do at the beginning, about Sam saying, yes, I'll let Lucifer take control of me. That is how I can then walk through the gate and close it. That's the agreement and everything. You don't just shoehorn this shit in in two minutes, less than that, and expect the audience to follow along with you 
and be fully satisfied with whatever happens, which we weren't. At least I wasn't. I know a few people weren't. Because then all of a sudden Crowley pulls this garbage. Well, he stands in front of Mark Pellerino, has the, the, the knife blade, which I swear, how does he do that? How does he keep it in his coat cufflink there? Like he just purposely tips it at the very end, like he's holding the knives, like it doesn't, I'm thinking of actually how they filmed this. Like Sam Shepard is, or Shepard has just got his hand like this, like imagine the dagger is right here, so he's just holding it right there and he's just like, and catches it, hope he has to catch it when he lets it go. Anyway, so he's got the knife there and Lucifer's like, oh, are you gonna use that against me? He's like, no. And he turns around, literally turns around and says, bye boys. And they thought that that was going to be a satisfying conclusion. They didn't. They clearly didn't because apparently the guy who's Andrew, whatever his name is, who is the showrunner of the show right now, he did not like the Crowley character. And admittedly, Crowley kind of went from kind of this anti-hero, the guy who didn't know whose side he was on when they first introduced him. I loved him when he first introduced, like, this is my hellhound. And then when he became a villain, I kind of... I don't know, I wasn't on the side with it because I liked Crowley, I liked that he wasn't a side taker. But that whole idea of closing hell, I don't know, I thought it was just interesting that they thought of it, but either way. So then he goes from being king of hell and then he brings Dean back for reasons, he's his friend. And they really pacify the character. If we're talking about pacification and making a character like basically useless, you look at Castiel's history. He is, if anything, if anyone is more guilty of causing more destruction and apocalypse uh, causing events, it's Castiel over the brothers. But Crowley, he doesn't really do much. And then they, in the last season, they had this concept of Cass and, and Crowley being the buddy cop duo, which was a kind of an interesting idea. They didn't take it really anywhere, but I like that aspect. But admittedly, you completely pacified the King of Hell. So yes, you had run yourself into a rut with the character. And what were you going to do with that, right? You can't do much else. Like, you pretty much set him up to have Lucifer break out of his traps. Like, it was so stupid. They even address it, and it's still dumb. It doesn't, just because you're addressing how easy it is for him to escape, it's still dumb. Anyways. But that is a send-off. That is a send-off to one of the greatest characters we've had in this show. Hell, his mom got burnt into, to death off-screen before the fucking episode even started. So, Rowena had a terrible send-off. What's her name? Death Girl, terrible send-off as well. But Crowley's send-off was the worst just because this is a character that we went from kind of not being understand, like kind of wondering whose side he's on, but we're happy to have him as a companion to a villain, to a mischievous, maybe like a trickster almost friend, and he would always be looking out for himself, and there was always a moment you're like, damn it Crowley, <laughs> and I liked that idea, I liked that he would do that, but now that they, he's gone, we don't have that character anymore, and it's gonna be really, it's gonna be hollow, because now we just have the brothers, and they killed off a lot of characters, we lost um, Jim Beaver, who was Bobby, for the, and the season, the show itself, has always been not as, not as solid since his death. That, that hurt, that took a lot, because Bobby was always there to help them figure out stuff. And when he died, they had that guy who was Jack Sparrow's buddy mate or whatever, but then that didn't happen either, right? So, that was why I just kind of... I don't know, I was a little bit upset when, obviously I was terribly upset when Bobby died, but I mean more so of how they were able to get on without him afterwards didn't seem that much of an issue, but that was just me. But either way, Crowley was one of the worst send-offs of this show's history. And for those of you who haven't seen it yet, I apologize for spoiling it, but it was pretty much guaranteed. If you haven't seen it yet, you're not missing out on much. Seriously, it is not a good idea to go into this thinking, oh wow, he ruined it. It's like, season 12 is one of those seasons that's gonna go and come and go and you're just kinda, it's like season six. 
more so season seven. It's just like you don't really remember it. Season seven is more memorable than this because of all the dick jokes. Anyways, guys, that's my thoughts on the death of Crowley and just how the show is going to continue on without him. I not. I don't know, because he brought a lot of humor. He brought a lot of funny, dark humor to this show. Like, I, at one point in season 11, I started having Crowley moments, and there were so many that he would do. Like, yeah, you know, I almost had one. I try to get one in every episode, every episode that he was in. But, anyways, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please discuss something, what you thought of the death of Crowley and what you think the show's gonna do without his presence in the show. Because obviously now we've got this evangelical white devil dude now who's... I'm really feeling a lot of rehashes of season 8 just from the trailer that was recently released. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll be sure to be reviewing Supernatural come this Friday.